basically this is the hugging experience and finally for a true petrol head and Porsche nerd like myself I can finally hug my dear beautiful Porsche some engineer has actually thought about love I returned home from the Taycan premiere in September. Berlin was the place where I first met the Taycan. A lot of thoughts has gone through my mind since then and during my visit in Berlin I collected a lot of data and I thought why not put a video about my thoughts and the extra data that I collected. Porsche Sweden is always telling me that Janko you need to drive the car before you make a judgment of it. But I am a petrol head, I am a Porsche nerd. That's what we do, isn't it? Judging a car before we have driven it. That's the essence of being a Porsche nerd. Everybody has opinion of cars they have not driven. And as in this case, I do have some thoughts about the Taycan. PDCC, well that this is this is how they strengthened out the roll bar. So this is how it's activated. It's twisted, quite sufficient if you ask me. But this is a tank with compressed air and it's connected to the compressor and this is how they get speed to the air suspension in the four-dimensional chassis control. The reservoir is there to make the car faster when lowered or raised. The 4D chassis was introduced with the Panamera and the starting point for the new Taycan chassis. With the same mechatronic system it still needed a lot of modification and the chassis of the Taycan should be considered as a brand new chassis with shared components. To combine the driving behavior without influence the drivetrain with an engine in the front and the rear axle was not possible. Therefore, Porsche decided to hand over the control of the drivetrain into the 4D chassis control. New algorithms were developed to control the engine and the balance of the car. Air suspension is a much more efficient way of using springs in comparison to the steel springs, especially in a 2.3 ton vehicle. Well, if you then take coefficient drag, and compare it between the Turbo and the Turbo S, you could, well, you have some interesting reading. Let me put it this way. If you look at the statistic, the Turbo has uh, 0.22 CV and the Turbo S has 0.25, but that has nothing to do with the chassis because the only differences between the Turbo and the Turbo S is actually the tires where the Turbo S is homologated with larger tires. And if you look at the ride height, and if you put the car into range mode, it will actually lower the car just as it does with sport mode. And as a consequence, the range will be extended and obviously the handling will be better in sport mode. Therefore, I think air suspension is a must have on a Taycan to cope, you know, with range and sportiness of the vehicle. And that gives me to think about when the, the cheaper models the Taycan is not cheap, it is ridiculous expensive. Nevertheless, less expensive models that will be introduced, I guarantee you will have steel springs. But how will that then affect the coefficient drag and the, well, well the range? And remember that the electric vehicle is actually not as complicated in construction as a combustion engine. The problem the vendors of the OEMs in the automotive industry is having is to adapt to the new technology. That's what you and I am actually going to pay for, not the technology that we receive for our dollars, but the transition towards electrification. Remember, this is not a revolution with electrification. It's just a change from gasoline and petrol or diesel to electricity. Nevertheless, there are certain things that I think they have made a bit too much complicated. This is what Porsche called the snake nest. It's a lot of hoses with switches where the cooling system is controlled. As far as where I understand it, there are in total of three or four cooling systems. One is for the battery pack, it is for the engines and the gearboxes, etc. And everything needs to be cooled down or, or 
heated if, if needed. So let me put an example. You're driving in the Swedish winter, it's very cold outside, and then you have maximum temperature. But to heat that, this snake nest could adjust it so it reuses the temperature from the batteries and the engine to heat the cabin. On the opposite, if you're driving in California on the desert, they actually could use the air conditioning function to will really cool down the performance of the motor and batteries. Remember that's in Sport Plus mode. Porsche has fought it through. Depending on which drive mode you are in, then the snake nest will, will work differently. There you have it, uh, snake nest. Complicated way to regulate the different heating and cooling depending on where it's needed. Nevertheless, let's uh, go into a more convenient place inside the cabin and get my first reaction of actually being inside the Taycan Turbo. I love the different interiors that we already could select from. Again, with a black top and then the, you know, beige, it actually looks really good. I think we're done with the deviated stitching, I believe. Not sure, but I think so. I am. Um, Love the way the in console sweeps in the car, but um, will I be satisfied when I use it? Not sure. The touch, the touch and feel is basically what we're used to at the um, uh, Panameras and 992 and all the other Porsches. The instrument cluster, though, is something I'm going to bring with me home. Spectacular to say at least. Mm, that's for sure. Um, the steering wheel, we all know it, but one thing is that you have this anthracite colored or goldish color uh, inlet in, in the steering wheel. Looks phenomenal. Great work, Porsche. A new colored um, Sport Chrono, also in luxury beige, perhaps, or something like that. Dual screens option, I believe, not standard, and in certain countries they are not allowed, so please check your local country if these are allowed. The glass roof. Mm, not sure yet. That's something I need to evaluate. Um, the perk with having a glass roof is that you can mount or fit a, you know, a box for skis, etc. So I guess more or less all cars in Norway will be equipped with a glass roof. Let's go in the back. I like these. Again. What's that? Okay, look. This, this is a huge problem. I'm not sure if you can see this. This was the same problem I had my 992. I open it, I want to push it out. I have to release it, nothing happens. I have to push it again and then it opens. Now I have it on video. Back seat. So the front seat is adjust according to how I would like to have it when I drive. Actually, slightly backwards since I love being quite in front when I'm driving. The back seat are astonishing. Now the glass roof actually looks something that I would like to have if I was sitting in the back seat. This though, this angle, I'm 180 centimeter, I think that's 5 feet 11, something like that. Yeah, not sure. Uh, but uh, remember they have lowered, actually there, there should be batteries here and they have lowered it to make sure the seating position is better. And I guess that's why they have destroyed the roof line and higher, well increased the height of the roof line compared to the concept car to be able to sit properly in the back. Otherwise, I mean, this is, yeah, here we go, cup holder, it should be a, four-seater vehicle, don't mix up with a four plus one or the two plus one back seat. No, not at all. Uh, you most likely would not see anything behind because the rear window are extremely small. Basically nothing. So uh, you don't have to look backwards when you drive the Taycan. Well, obviously you will have, oh, here we have a touch screen. Okay, so here you point out where you would like to have. This is over-engineering big time. Remember the flaps you can adjust in the air condition with the Panamera? Well, they have taken it to the back seat. Well, then they have something to do at least. Like the two color tones as well. Mm, like the turbo. Mm. But the price? Well, why, why do you have to price it? For the money for... Uh, Taycan Turbo. I can buy a, you know, a GT3 manual if you would like, a 991.2. Ah, not sure about the pricing. I'm getting cold feet. That's for sure.
Let's go out again two times. Did you see that? I'm not sure about that. Yes, I'm getting cold feet. Remember my black Porsche 992 Carrera S? Well, actually, do you know what happened with it? It has been sold again to its third owner. But that's not the, you know, big issue of history about that. Is 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 the, the fact that Viva La France has taken a bit of the Porsche Swedish Porsche history. You know, my Porsche was the first 8th generation 911 that was delivered in Sweden. And someone in France has actually bought my old 911. So it's as we talk, speak, the, the, well, the car has been shipped to France. If you know who that is, please fail that in the comment below. Anyway, the 992 Carreras, I had so many electrical problems that I sold it, I'm not sure how few months I owned that car. And buying a fully electric vehicle from Porsche, well, I do have some resistance toward that. And now my experience of being locked in, well, sort of locked in in the Taycan, well, that does not bring my wallet on the table to buy the Taycan. Remember, though, that Porsche Sweden has told me several times that I should drive the vehicle before I judge it, and I tend to do that. The premiere will be in the beginning of 2020 in Sweden. It has not yet been released in Sweden. And I know for sure that I'm going to lend a car to drive it to see how it is, and I will produce a video to you guys to get my actual driving thoughts of the Taycan. It needs to be something unique, something special for me to really connect towards the car, because as it is now, I'd rather take the money and buy some spectacular sports car, park it in the garage and pick it up on the weekends and commute back and forth to work with a, you know, a spectacular electric car that I've been driving, the BMW i3. Well, that's how it is. I think that I am not yet connected to the Taycan. Feels strange to say that. I sincerely hope that the test drive will change my mind towards the Taycan and make sure that I will be as excited as I am with the other products from Porsche. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate the time you spend on my channel.